imagine a situation where you are consistently buying crypto, you are dollar cost averaging, you're disciplined, holding for long term because you understand the potential that exists within the space, right? So you're positioning yourself to take maximum advantage of these gains that exist. And then you wake up one morning and all your crypto is gone. Now, that's a very bad experience. That's a pretty unfortunate event, right? Uh, but it happens. And I find that most of the time this situation could be avoided. Uh, if you just take the necessary precautions and necessary safety measures that you can take to avoid that from happening, uh, then you'll be fine. So in this video, we're going to we're going to talk about the best way to keep your crypto safe so you can sleep well at night. And so you can make sure that you stay profitable for long term and you don't lose your 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 crypto. OK, if you are new to this channel, my name is Vincent Mbata. And on this channel, we share crypto education and we find ways to stay profitable uh, through crypto you know through simple uh, passive income okay so basically we share ways to to end passive income you know with cryptocurrency okay so if this is what you are interested in do go ahead and subscribe to the channel also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that i put out and of course give this video a like so you know youtube can you know so it, so other people can find it uh, basically so let's dive right in and uh before i continue you'll see that uh, i'm on my website here simplepassiveincome.net so this is where you'll find again most and more uh crypto education so i'll leave the link to my website below so you can just hop in and just check it out uh and uh you know check out the posts that are that are on here and just you know stay stay up to date and and educate yourself within the space okay so now let's let's get right into the best way to keep your crypto safe so the first way is and again this is not in any sequence whatsoever but you just want to make sure that you tick all these boxes all right so you want to choose a non custodial wallet okay a secure non-custodial wallet so what's a non-custodial wallet this is a decentralized wallet where you are in control of your private keys okay so this is better than for example using binance coinbase luno etc where yes you might be storing your crypto there they might have their own kind of wallet mobile wallet but it's it's you know you're not in control it's basically their own they control the private keys you are not in control so uh, there are many options to store cryptocurrency on a non-custodial wallet i mean you can download mobile wallets like exodus jacks uh, bread as well and and a few others uh, where you have control of your private keys okay that's very important because remember like the common saying in crypto not your keys not your crypto okay so you want to make sure you're in control all the time and then the second way is you want to use a unique and strong password for different accounts okay as you get involved in crypto and in the online space in general you begin to have lots of different accounts from different platforms and different wallets etc so it is tempting to use a simple password for you know like or to even use one password on more than one platform so that's very dangerous even though you know it might be tempting and you you might be tempted to use a password that you usually use that's easy to remember that you use for other platforms as well that's not very safe okay so over and above that you you want to use a strong password so not only should it be unique but it should be strong so just stay away from passwords such as your name surname at one two three your name surname at your date of birth or whatever you know that's that's very easy and that's that's sort of a go-to uh, for hackers when they try to hack into your account you know they try those different combinations first because you know it's easy to remember so you want to stay away from it so the longer the password the better so here's what i do i usually write the i write my password down um 
you know, before, you know, I create an account, right? I usually just write it down and then um, go ahead and then like set it on the platform. So I make sure it's as difficult as, as possible as or as difficult as I want it to be. And then after that, I go ahead and transfer it over to the, the platform, okay? And I do that for all my passwords. That's why they are very difficult, okay? Um, I I really stay away from just memorizing simple passwords. I just write them down, make them as like complicated as possible. And then the other way is you can also get a password manager. A password manager is nothing but a computer program that allows you uh, to store, generate, and manage your passwords for local applications, local applications and online services. So another kind of password manager could be like your Google, for instance, you know, a Google browser. Um, they have a, uh, they have kind of a local uh, manager or password manager as well. You'll see that sometimes when you, when you, lo when you log in, and you know they ask you to save your password right and if you do then you know you kind of saving to their local uh to their local servers so that next time you log in then they just present you with your password then you don't have to type it in etc so you know and you can do that with basically like all the accounts that you create online uh, but of course that that's not that's not recommendable i mean i wouldn't recommend that okay but you want to get a you want to get a, a designated password manager because there's more features it's not it's not limited okay and there are there's there's different there's different ones that you can get uh the most popular ones is one password uh it's you get bitwarden you get uh dashlane as well so and there's different versions there's paid versions and there's um there's there's free versions okay so this is basically you managing all your passwords in one place so you would have to have a password for that and then uh then you get access to all the other passwords etc et so that's that's also a good way to go about managing your your passwords and staying safe online okay and then obviously you also want to use a two-factor authentication uh also known as a 2fa so I mean, many wallets or uh, and even platforms allow you to create a two-factor authentication. This is essentially a second layer of security, right? So you would you would have your password, you know, that you created, and then over and above that, you would have to insert or put in the code as well. So you just install the app, a a two FA app, and then you know it will present you with different codes all the time and then you just put that as now uh, like when you log in it will be required okay so even if a a hacker uh, kind of figures out your password then they would still have to put in the 2fa code for them to gain access to your account so you know then you are protected in that regard so there's there's several there's several uh 2fas but my you know okay then the common one is google authenticator and Audi. I use Audi. I, I find that Audi has more options and it has more security features. There's there's a lot more features. So Audi is definitely my my favorite. That's what I would go for. And that's what I use. So here's here's the other way. I know some platforms uh enable you to authorize using your your message, like like text message. So that's not it's not really the safest way. Yes, it is kind of a, a a second layer kind of security, but it's not really the safest way because you can you can uh, get attacked. You know, your phone can can be attacked through what's called a SIM swap attack. So this is when a hacker uh, can call your network, your network provider, and insist on a SIM swap. You know, um, and then they can divert your text messages. Uh, to the SIM card that they own uh, and therefore authorize uh, that w whatever uh, so they can so they can access uh, your account you know so they would get the the link and authorize so they get access to your account so that's not it's not really the safest way to go about it right get an app download Authy and then you're good to go and then the other way is is encrypting your e-wallet okay so over and above you know 
just having your password to access your wallet uh, or your now your 2fa you also want to have uh this you also want to have encryption some wallets allow you to protect your, your private keys and coins by encrypting them so encryption enables you to set a unique password to lock your crypto when a third party attempts to access them okay so the hacker will not be able to steal your crypto unless they have the password so you also want to protect your encryption password okay of course this serves as a as a further precaution against cyber attacks so um, not all wallets have this feature but one that that has it um, i mean you get you get you get a you get a lot but uh there's there's a few like like electrum i know electrum also allows you to do this so just just search around and see uh whichever one that that you find suitable for you okay so uh you also want to use a hardware wallet uh, i mean this is in my opinion the best way to stay uh to stay safe this is the best way to stay safe because i mean by using a a hardware wallet like ledger nano or trezor um i mean well i personally prefer ledger that's what i use uh, but this is essentially it's a it's a cold storage okay that means you're not connected to the internet you're offline you're not you're not connected to the internet that's why it's 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 cold storage so you get a hot wallet and you get a cold wallet if we can put it that way hot wallet it's connected to the internet you need the internet to access it to access the crypto etc so uh that's why you know it's 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 easier to hack you uh as opposed to using a cold wallet or cold storage because it's not connected to the internet it's offline right so again it's worth noting that your hardware uh alone getting lost like your hardware wallet getting lost uh, it, it wouldn't lead to your crypto being stolen like if you if you just lose your hardware wallet it wouldn't really now lead to you losing your crypto the most important thing there is your past is your passphrase okay that's the most important thing your passphrase so uh when you store your your hardware wallet don't store it together with your password uh with your passphrase and your password right you want to keep them you know at a separate location so obviously you're still kind of increasing the chances of you being being hacked because if you know they steal your hardware wallet and then somehow they figure your password out then you know then you might be in trouble but but uh, so you want to just keep your hardware wallet in one place and your passphrase and your passwords in another okay so you again as the next point you want to save your passphrase or your backup password this is usually a 12 or 24 word password it's also known as a mnemonic phrase as a seed phrase as well so you want to write it down and keep it someplace safe like i said you can you know just keep it maybe you can have two copies for example and keep them at at, uh, at different locations okay so uh also you want to be careful not to respond to maybe you know like on telegram or maybe on email you know you know support staff uh telling you to now you know send them their part your, your passphrase etc no official support staff will ever text you or email you and ask you for your for your for your passphrase you know so you want to be careful of that you want to be careful uh not to not to follow such uh you know such advice or anything like that you want to make sure it's safe okay and then you also never want to share your passphrase you don't want to share it with anyone you want to write it down and you don't print it through a Wi-Fi printer or anything that would that would be susceptible to cloud capturing or anything like that. Okay, you want to stay offline, use your own individual printer and stay offline. Okay, so and you want to use a multi-signature feature, which is now this is actually it's a, it's a great feature. This multi-signature feature it's it's taking the security really uh, your security security of your assets to the next level where um it allows you to add users other than yourself 
to access your crypto in authorized transactions, right? So unless all authorized members approve the transaction or login, the hacker would not be able to steal your funds. Again, the Electrum uh, has this feature where you, ha you can have, you know, multiple sig uh, signatories where even if the hacker, fi you know, figures out your password, but it's still, you know, it still need other, other, um, other people to authorize a transaction. So you also get other um, devices that that have this feature, such as Ledger Nano X and Trezor Model T uh, wallet, Armory, etc. So there's a few that you can that you can find out there that enable you to do that. Okay, you have multiple, you know, more than one person basically authorizing the authorizing access to the wallet, and then. Uh, you want to update your software as well. So you turn on your automatic updates so that your wallet can update automatically whenever there's an update available. Okay, so you want to take advantage of improved security, latest features and bug fixes. So usually when 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 updates come out, they usually contain, you know, um, improved security and all of it. So you want to make sure you stay up to date. Okay and um you also want to enable notifications so you are notified whenever there's a new update or whenever whenever an update has been performed on your in your wallet okay so you just want to keep track of of that activity okay and then you also don't keep all your crypto in one wallet i mean you've heard the saying that don't keep all your eggs in one basket so same as you know don't keep all your crypto in one wallet you want to use at least two or three i mean i personally use about five okay through the different things that i do but i have more than definitely more than two more than three wallets that i use but look you could have like you could have maybe one wallet for just like you know getting in and out of of positions like a like maybe Exodus and MetaMask, you know, where you can easily get in and out of positions and you able to access your crypto easily and then have another one for like your long term storage kind of uh, offline storage or cold storage like your ledger, for example. And um, then, you know, uh, that you that's that's your long term. Some of your or most of your assets are stored on there. OK, so you want to. You want to have that as well so uh, and of course you want to back up your 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 wallets your your private keys you want to back them up as well you know and store them offline store your keys offline so over and above the safety precautions mentioned above right there's um i mean there's there's ways you conduct yourself online and you know there's do's and don'ts so i want to just quickly touch on the do's and don'ts that you just have to be aware of um, to really stay protected the first one is um this is a do now okay we're going to cover do's and then we'll go to don'ts so the first one is you want to be proactive you want to teach your family members uh, you know for in case of an emergency and you are not available to maybe you know uh, to perform certain transactions or when you're no longer around uh, though so these people may obviously one day need to access your crypto so you want to make sure you teach them as well and you show them how uh, you know you teach them the basic security measures that they should follow online right so that's the first thing just be proactive there don't don't put it off for one day don't just do it now just like show and teach teach your you know family members like how to stay safe online okay and then uh you want to take some time out really and dedicate it to checking your footprint online and just review your security measures go through your accounts that you you currently have your your wallet etc just make sure that hey is my password strong enough is my is my you know is it unique passwords am i using two-factor authentications am i using you know uh whatever okay uh is it unique is it is it strong enough etc so all of that and just making sure you are taking all the necessary measures on your side okay so just take some time off and do that 
and change where you need to change just to make sure that you are good to go. Then you want to take the safety measures at home. This is now making sure your home is safe in the first place. You have the necessary security at home. And um, you also want to invest in a fireproof safe uh, where you can maybe store one of your passphrases in there. Okay. And maybe store the other one, obviously, in a different location. But you want to make sure that your safe is, your home is safe. And then maybe invest in a safe as well, like a fireproof safe. Okay. And then you want to bookmark the sites that you visit. If you regularly, you know, trade or, you know, do some, so you access, let's say, Binance more often or or Coinbase or Luna or whatever uh, that you 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 do you want to bookmark those websites so you don't have to go to google all the time because you know you could be increasing the chances of getting hacked because when you go to google i mean there's lots of there's lot, like if you just go to google and type binance or lo binance login you'll find there's several websites which most often are ads you'll find them even before you get to the official website and one of those sites could just as well be a scam site okay and without knowing you click on it and what do you know uh, then you get you get hacked right so you want to make sure that you bookmark those sites and then uh you know for easy access you just go straight to your bookmarks and you know it's it's legit it's legit sites okay so that's that's now very important again and then you want to secure your devices as well. So apart from protecting your apps with your with the passwords, with the 2FA, etc., you want to make sure your device is protected, your device itself. I mean, there's face ID uh, identification, there's fingerprint, login, you know, you there's pin codes, like just accessing your phone, just having just to be able to use your phone. There's different different security measures there already okay uh, remember it just takes one security vulnerability for your mobile tablet or pc to be hacked so i mean um, especially if you're also using pc and some of your wallets maybe are on your pc you want to make sure you get a, an antivirus for example or get an anti-spyware okay so this would protect you against malware or anything like that and you also want to set your firewall to maximum security as well okay so uh, just to make sure that you are protected so the following are don'ts this is what you don't want to do okay you don't want to click on random links so phishing um, fake messages emails you know they're all you know that's that's phishing basically so uh, you'd get like an email or sms trying to scare you maybe say there's something wrong with your account you need to log in quickly so you can rectify it so you need to click on this link or whatever so just know uh, it's a phishing email. They're trying to get your info so they can get access to your account. Do not click on that link. Never click on that link. And then you also don't want to copy and paste. Most brow most browsers allow you to to copy from clipboard and then paste and allow you to save the password so that next time you log in automatically. You don't want to do that. Okay. You don't want to copy and paste stuff and you don't want to like save passwords so you can log in automatically i mean what if somehow your device gets lost or somebody gets access to your device um and then they log in automatically and get access to your crypto and then they send it out to their own wallet address you know because you never know who will have access to your to your to your devices so you don't want to do that. You don't want to save passwords, okay? And then you also don't want to install random apps from Google Chrome. I mean, you want to make sure that you are downloading official apps. So you want to go, for example, to exodus.com and you want to download from there or you want to make sure you follow those, you follow, you follow your projects, right? Uh, maybe on Twitter or, or on social media and you make sure that whatever they, they tweet or whatever, they, re they recommend you download it's an official app okay so you also want to make sure that you 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 follow you know those safety measures okay and uh, i know i know google chrome 
uh, and brave you know there's there's extensions etc so you want to make sure you just install uh, the official ones all right you don't want to be hacked and then also you don't want to download files from strangers uh there's look there's there's torrents there's all sorts of files that you can get online so you want to make sure like you don't want to download like any random files from strangers okay i mean you could download malware and that that could infect your device and then obviously that could cause you to lose your information so you don't want to do that and um lastly you don't want to fall for scammers look if it sounds too good to be true it usually is i can tell you that okay if it sounds too good to be true it usually is so if somebody promises you like crazy let me close this curtain if somebody promises you like crazy returns like crazy returns um like make 100 percent uh return in in five days okay oh in two weeks or whatever the case may be uh stay away stay away those people are just trying to take your crypto you send them crypto and then they promise you these crazy returns and guess what uh that your money is gone okay you you won't get it back your crypto is gone so you want to make sure you don't fall for that all right um so that's that's basically all the points that i have uh for you guys you know you might have you might be following other measures that I perhaps didn't include here. So you want to um, just let us know in the comment section uh, the measures that you take, the other security measures that you follow to make sure you are protected in crypto. OK, so uh, that's basically it for today. If you found this video informative, do give it a like and again, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any video that I put out and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.